In the practice of Ashtanga Yoga, we need five basic elements, five things which when combined are the tools we need to practice. The first one is vinyasa. So how would we define vinyasa? Most of the time we say, well, it's just movement and breathing or a link connecting postures. Vinyasa is much more than that. The physical aspect of the vinyasa, the flowing aspect, represents everything we can see in our practice, the physical, the external practice. The breath, that aspect of the vinyasa, represents everything we cannot see, the invisible world, the internal practice. So vinyasa seeks a balance between the visible and the invisible, the gross and the subtle. Everything we can see in the practice, everything we cannot see. So when you're practicing your vinyasa, do your best to marry the breath with the movement. This is where we refine our practice over many years. It's about relaxing and finding a way to move gracefully like a cat, using only the muscles required to get us from one point to the next, and letting breath be the guide for us. Now mentioning breath, of course we have a specialized type of breath, so the second element here is breathing, ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath means we make a sound in the back of our throat. The quickest way to try to find this is to do this simple exercise called the ha method. You go like this. <sighs> then while exhaling through your mouth, you close your mouth, mouth and let the air come out your nose like this. <sighs> then with the mouth still closed, you inhale through the nose, maintaining that swirling sound. This is a key and integral part to the practice because the sound of that breath tells us everything about the practice. If we feel it being restricted, like <clears throat> we know we're trying too hard. If the breath stops, <clears throat> we've gone too deep, right? If the breath becomes too shallow, the mind has probably wandered. Listen to the breath. Refine it like you would the sound of Aum, like you would a mantra. When we chant Aum, we try to create this beautiful sound. Aum. Just like that with breath. We wouldn't say Aum like this. Aum! Aum! There's no difference in Aum like that or <clears throat> breathing like that. Refine the sound of the breath. Think of the Ujjayi sound like the mantra of Ashtanga Yoga. Keep coming back to that. Keep reminding yourself about that. The breath is always our safest guide to let us know how far we should go and to let us know the quality of our practice. Another element, drishti, the gazing point. Even if you don't know the drishti, even if you're not sure about the drishti, here's the easiest way to figure it out. Think of drishti as an intent of direction. It has very little to do with the thing we're looking at. For instance, in this posture, Janu Shirshasana, if the drishti is the toe, it doesn't mean we just stare and, and analyze the toe. It means we're growing toward the toe. You don't have to just stare right at the toe. You're bringing your gaze in that direction, but you're also taking the intent and direction of the posture in the direction of that. That's drishti. If I'm twisting, the drishti will take my gaze back behind. Whenever my arms remain over my head, the drishti is up there at the thumbs. It's a natural progression. Let your head follow the lines of energy. Drishti also helps us to turn this into a meditation. It's a part of the practice that's like a gateway to the internal world. By focusing on drishti, we can develop the meditative aspects of this. So drishti is also a powerful tool in the practice of Ashtanga Yoga. Next we have bandhas. Bandhas are highly misunderstood. Bandhas are not strong abs. It doesn't mean you contract your abs and we understand bandhas. Bandhas are a very subtle form. There's a book from India called Mula Bandha, the Master Key. It's 140 pages about Mula Bandha. So much detailed information. Usually we say a bandha is like a lock. A lock is something that's closed, nothing can enter or leave. I like to think of these Bandhas more like a valve that allows an energy or an element to move one direction through it and not back. 
just like in our circulatory system. When the heart beats and blood flows, it is valves that prevent it from going back the other direction. It allows it to move one way. So these valves of energy, we stimulate specific areas of the body, Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, and occasionally Jalandhara Bandha. Mula Bandha is located in front of the anus, behind the genitals, this lifting action, almost as though you're resisting the urge to urinate. Uriyana Bandha is represented by trying to create stillness in the belly. Jalandhara Bandha is a locking of the chin toward the chest. We attempt to hold these bandhas for the duration of practice. Probably they're going to come and go and come and go. Just keep bringing an awareness, a reminder, coming back to that element of the practice. This is a very basic introduction to the idea of bandhas. Just bring awareness to your internal practice. Try to keep your belly still and fill your body with breath. The final element, asanas, the fifth element of Ashtanga Yoga. The best definition of asana is posture comfortably held. Don't work at 100%. Work at about 85%. Instead of seeing how far you can pull, understand what your limit is, and then back out. Work at about 85 or 90% of your capacity rather than 100%. Working at 100%, if that one day I go 103%, that 3% rep represents injury, or overstretching or overworking somehow. So don't go quite so deep. If I'm working at 85 or 90 percent, I have a nice cushion that I can use. If I go a little further one day, I'm okay. It's the breath, focusing on the breath, that will allow us to go deeper in the posture. By using this formula for the asanas, you'll find you'll go further and deeper. You'll get more by doing less. Don't try so hard. Relax. Look at nature. Look at the cats in nature. Think of your practice like a Zen calligrapher. They want to use the most simple brushstroke to convey the most poetry and depth. That's our practice. A great friend of mine, a painter, once said, a painting is only as good as a single brushstroke. So while practicing yoga, our practice is only as good as the quality of a single breath. Take this concept of the five elements, apply it to your practice, enjoy the journey, and I think that these five things will help you to have a deeper and greater understanding of yoga and a greater enjoyment of your practice. Namaste.